Hello YouTube, this is NecroStevo and you are watching my black and white EV training tutorial. I hope you all enjoy this. I had uh, a lot of fun putting it together, although it was a little bit arduous to get the narration kind of how I wanted it to. But I'm basically going to break down what I do when I EV train my Pokemon. You can conform it to however you want, uh, whether you like the spots I choose. Um, I'm going to try to choose spots where the Pokemon that appear are only that Pokemon to increase the efficiency and how quickly EV training goes. So first off, whenever I'm EV training, I always bring my Pelipper. You can bring any Pokemon. Um, really, you're going to need Fly and Surf just to get from area to area. And then some EV training spots you need to Surf in order to encounter the Pokemon. So Pelipper is very useful for that. You can use Swanna or any other number of Pokemon. You can even bring one that has Fly and Rings or whatever you want to do there. Second thing that is very important for EV training as far as making it go relatively quickly and relatively smoothly is going to be the Pokerus status. Now Pokerus are tiny microscopic organisms that cause your Pokemon to grow better and in this case they basically give you double the amount of EVs. Uh, so if normally if you kill a uh, Basculin it'll give you two speed EVs. If you have Pokerus on the Pokemon it'll give you four. And that's great because with EVs for every four EVs that you get you get one stat point. So you basically since you can only get a maximum of 510 EVs on any Pokemon and only 252 on any one stat. These are a lot of numbers I know. I'm going to keep the math in the bottom for you guys. But that means you can get a change of 64 um, stat points basically in any one stat. So the first EV hotspot that we're going to go to right here is the one I like for Basculin and that's going to be our speed EVs. Um, it's important at least I find it very, very useful to turn off the battle animations just because it speeds things up tremendously. Also, turn up your tech speed. All these types of small changes add up a lot when you're EV training a lot of Pokemon. As you saw in the beginning, my clock is maxed out. Um, so it's it's very time-consuming unless you go through and do these types of things. And then it stops it from being so grindy. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable in the fact that you're rearing your Pokemon. Anyways, though, whenever you encounter Basculin, as long as you knock it out, whether you uh, you have the Pokemon who has Poker Wrist and is holding the power item, in this case it would be Power Anklet, um, and then you switch them out to something else, or that Pokemon just outright KOs the Basculin, you're always going to get the two Speed EVs. If you have the Power Anklet, that's going to give it plus four, which means you're going to be at six Speed EVs. And if you have Poker Wrist, it'll multiply it by two, which means 12 Speed EVs per Basculin. Now, what does that mean as far as getting to 252? Well, assuming... Um, you guys understand the math that I'm throwing down there at the bottom. You give it 10 um, Carbos in order to give it 100 EVs. You get 10 EVs per vitamin that you use. And then after that, you're going to use, you're going to KO 12 Basculin. And then after that, you're going to KO, you're going to remove the power item and KO two more. And that's going to apply for any Pokemon that gives you two EVs in a stat. So Basculin, whether it's Red Stripe or Blue Stripe, will always give you the two speed EVs. They're really easy to encounter, whether you go to Route 3 right there or whether you go to somewhere else. The next EV that we're going to do is right here on, uh, you can encounter these guys on Routes 1 and 2. Right underneath this city is a little bit better on Route 1 because you're only going to encounter Patrat and Lillipup. And they will always give you one attack EV. This is a little bit different from encountering a Pokemon that gives you two EVs. Because when they only give you one, that means you're going to get one EV. If you're holding the power item, that'll increase it to five, because that's plus four. And then multiply that by two, which means you get ten. So that means after you give them, say, ten proteins to get them to 100 EVs and attack, you're going to need to KO 15 Patrat or Lillipup, and or Lillipup, whichever one. And then take off the power item and KO one more, and that'll put you at 252. So the math is a little bit easier. Uh, I hope it makes sense to you guys if it doesn't uh, I am throwing the annotations in the bottom so feel free to pause it at the at the end of the video I'm going to do a recap of the math so then and I'll leave those annotations up for a little bit longer to give you guys plenty of time to look at them but uh, right here you just see I went ahead and found a Patrat too um, I wasn't actually EV training Teddy he was just kind of the first thing I grabbed in my box um, and I needed to pass the poker to some things so that's kind of what I use this for but anyways though <clears throat> excuse me uh, once you're finished right here with attack, now it is time to fly. I think now we're going to take our way to Dragon Spiral City. I'm sorry, Dragon Spiral Tower, 
which is another location for attack EVs in case you want a chance of getting two attack EVs instead of just one. Um, if you encounter Dreadigun on the first floor of the tower, it can give you two attack EVs. Otherwise, Golad and Mean Fu, who also appear in the area, will give you one attack EV each. Um, these Pokemon are considerably a higher level than the level 2 and 3 Patrats and Lillipups on Route 1, obviously. So if you're trying to EV train a newly hatched Pokemon, um, and you're trying to get it some experience, maybe by switching in and switching it out, I don't really recommend that method because it takes longer. Uh, but you can get a little bit more levels here. I find it much to be much more efficient to take the Pokemon that you're going to train and uh, go and level it up to level 50, normally by beating up Audinos in the Great Chasm, and then use HP reducing berries if you need to. Most Pokemon need uh, HP stat or two. Um, and then go back and do the full EV training, because then you don't have to switch out your Pokemon a lot, and it can be the one that's actually doing the KOs. Um, which means this whole process just goes a lot quicker because you're not taking that time and switching out your Pokemon. Uh, of course, you can only obtain those reducing EV berries from the Dream World. So uh, if you guys don't have a Dream World account, now is a good time to go ahead and make one. They also do a lot of really cool Pokemon giveaways on that account and item giveaways and that type of thing. And you can send the Dream World Pokemon you find to your game. So, you know, why not? So with attack EVs out of the way, and of course the power item for that is the Power Bracer, we're now going to move on to uh, HP EVs, I believe is where we're going. And that's going to be the uh, Route 8. And here it's winter time in my game, because it just turned to August. Uh, so all the shallow water is frozen over, which I actually find more convenient, because on the shallow water you can run into Shelmet and Car uh, Carablast. And you can run into Palpito, who will give you HP EVs, but he's not very common. Whereas if you're in the water, as long as you avoid the dark spots, which... The dark spots normally contain Stunfisk as well, but sometimes they have Seismitoad in them. You will always encounter Stunfisk. Um, the only thing is, is that this is a really small area, so you kind of got to run back and forth a little bit. But Stunfisk will always give you two HP EVs, which, just to reiterate the math again, if you give yourself the Pokemon that's being trained, say he needs 252 um, in HP, uh, the reason you choose 252, of course, is because you can only have 255 in any one given stat, and you don't want to waste those three EV points. That's not, um, you can't divide that by four. But anyways, though, you're going to give it 10 HP ups, which will give it 100 e HP EVs. Then you're going to uh, KO with the Pokeris and the Power Weight equipped. KO 12 Stunfisk, which will put you at 244. Take off the Power Weight and KO two more, which will put you at 252 HP EVs. as a maximum amount of HP EVs that you can have. I will tell you to be wary. Stunfisk can get to a little bit higher level, a level 33 or 35 or so, and he will learn the attack Endure, which makes him annoying to take down. And also he has the Static ability, which means you have to watch out for contact moves, which you may get paralyzed. Moving on, we're going to go and get some special attack EVs from the Celestial Tower. This one's another nice uh, place just because you have a nurse on the second floor who can heal you. The only Pokemon that appear in there, uh, Litwick and Elgium, are always going to give you one special attack EV, so you don't have to really run it, worry about running away from anything. I really like spots like that, just because the time you spend running away, and the time you spend getting negative status and having to heal, that just makes it all much more grindy, and it takes much more time, and that's why people don't like to do it. But if you find a method that's a little bit more efficient, like the one that I found for myself, it can make it almost fun even, because, you know, you can do this type of thing while you're watching the show. Plus, every single Litwick encounter you have, you have a chance of finding a shiny Litwick, and shiny Litwick is awesome. But anyways, of course, the power item you need for special attack is the power lens. Litwick and LGM both give one special attack EV, so that's going to be one plus four from the power lens times two from the Pokeris, and that's going to give you ten special attack EVs for every Litwick or LGM that you encounter. Um... On the second floor there, only Litwick show up. On the third floor and higher, I believe, you have a chance of finding LGM. Um, and like I said, if you get burned like I did here, even though I don't really care because this is a Guts Ursa Ring, <clears throat> you can go to the second floor and a nurse will heal you. A fun way of keeping track of act of how many Pokemon you say you, um, you have KO'd, if you don't feel like keeping scratch on a pad or you have a bad memory, like I do, um, is just to look at the amount of attacks you've used. If you're KOing Litwick 
with one attack every single time and you're you forgot how many you've KO'd, just look at how many attacks you've used and you'll subtract the amount you've used from the total you have, and that's how many times you've used it, and that's how many Lilwicks you've killed. So uh, that's an interesting way to keep track of that type of thing. Now our next few EVs are going to be more defensive ones. Of course we have defense and special defense left. Pinwheel Forest is uh, the location is that I have found to be the most efficient for defense EVs. Um, it's not that great just because you have an equal chance of running into things that don't give you defense EVs. You can run into Petalil, which gives you special defense, and you can run into Tranquil and Peta, which both give you speed EVs. Tranquil giving you two speed EVs and Peta giving you one. Um, the notable ones, of course, are going to be uh, in the Dark Grass, which is my preferred training area, you can encounter Whirlipede and Swadloon. Both of them give you two defense EVs. And if you go to the regular grass over on the other side, you can encounter Sawaddle and Venipede. And they both give you one defense EV. So, of course, if you have the Power Belt equipped, which is the correct item for defense, I believe, um, if you encounter Swadloon or you encounter Whirlipede, two defense EVs plus four is going to give you six times 2 is going to give you 12, so that means for each one you KO, you get 12 defense EVs. And I like the dark grass over this, the light patch of grass, just because since you have a chance of encountering other Pokemon that aren't useful for defense training, you have double, you, if you get two in a battle, you have double a chance. And as I mentioned before, EVs calculated based on the experience you would have received. So say you encounter a Tranquil and a Swadloon. You can KO the Swadloon to get the defense EVs, and then run away from the battle. Um, if you do it that way, you won't get any speed EVs, and you'll still get the defense EVs that you want. So here's an example of Whirlipede appearing. Um, of course, Whirlipede and Swadloon have the ability to use Protect. So if you are using the method I spoke of earlier of counting your attacks as a way of keeping track of how many Pokemon you've um, uh, KO'd, it's good to have a secondary attack so that way, um, say they Protect on one, just use a secondary attack and then you still have your accurate count um, of the number of Pokemon that you have KO'd. Alternatively, use Faint, of course, uh, but that's a really weak move. And really only useful for doubles and triples, to be honest. But yes, so uh, I'm going to try to get out of this dark patch of grass right here. And here's a Swadloon. Just like in the other scenario I said, if you KO the Swadloon, run away from the Petalo. Of course, Petalil does give one special defense EV, so um, if you're training a mixed wall or something like that, you can pick up some of those EVs there. Um, but if you go back over to the other side of the forest where the grass is normally colored, that's where you can encounter Sawaddle and Venipede. Uh, and they, since you're only encountering one at a time, I don't find this area to be as useful, but, you know, to each their own. Um, if you're having uh, trouble trying to get, trying to get the different vitamins and things that I've spoken about, vitamins, uh, EV reducing berries, the power items, I encourage you all to uh, look on your online Pokemon community such as game FAQs. Uh, I know when I'm perusing those forums and people ask, I normally have an extra one just because I like to have more than one set of everything. I'm kind of a weird completionist when it comes to my games. Uh, so I'll, uh, I don't know, I can't speak for other people, but I'm normally happy to give an extra one if I have an extra one. Um, and it's pretty easy to stockpile berries on the dream world. It's kind of like playing Farmville, I guess. I've never played Farmville, but they look the same. And of course, also on the dream world, you get all those really cool giveaways and downloadable Pokemon and different Sea Gear skins. So if you don't have a, uh, a dream world account already, you might as well get one because you can get Pokemon in their dream world abilities and EV reducing berries. And uh, you can even get other random items. You can pick up vitamins there and other held items and lots of cool stuff. Um, anyways, though, the last EV hotspot that we have is another good one that I really, really like. Uh, to get to it, Route 17, Route 18, it's good to use a Repel with the Pokemon over level, we'll say level 35 in your first slot. Um, just because you have to walk through some grass and surf a decent bit to get there. So let's pop a Max Repel. We're going to go down here beside Route 1 and then surf all the way over to the side, um, if you all have played through the game, you'll know that you can pick up a Volcarona over there. Plus, there's a lady in a cabin who will heal you, so if for some reason you get status, you can always make use of that. 
Of course, the Pokemon we're trying to encounter over here is Frillish, which, as long as you stay clear of the dark patches of water, which are normally Alamomola, you will encounter Frillish, who will give you one special defense EV. Uh, the power item you need for special defense, of course, is the power band. And the math, once again, just to reiterate, um, if you give 10 Zinks, which are going to give you 100 special defense EVs, then KO 15 Frillish, which is going to put you up to 250, take off the power item and KO one more, then that's going to put you at 252 and the maximum amount of EVs that you can have in that one stat. Without wasting EVs, of course. Uh, I don't think anything is too threatening over here. If you encounter unusually high level Frillish, they might use um, Will-O-Wisp, I believe. But other than that, uh, not really anything threatening. They're pretty low level. Um, just be sure if you're carrying something that's maybe more physically oriented, um, you can KO them in one shot, because sometimes Curse Body will go off, and then it'll be more annoying to KO them. And I'm trying to show you guys efficient ways to do this, and I really think the most efficient way to do EV training is to just use the Pokemon that you're trying to train, and be able to KO the Pokemon that you're getting EVs from in one shot. So those are our hotspots there. I'm now going to do a brief recap of the math in the bottom there. In the meantime, let's fly over to Nimbasa, and uh, I'm going to show you exactly where you go to pick up those power items. Um, and also, if you're randomly, I guess if you're breeding, the guy in the green hair there is the judge, and he'll tell you about your Pokemon's IVs. I talk to that guy a lot. He must think I'm a weird creeper or something. But uh, I don't know why I talk to the guy. The guy gives you TMs in exchange for your BP. But if you talk to the woman, for 16 BP, you can get the power items. And for uh, 1 BP, you can get the proteins and all the other vitamins there, which give you 10 EVs per 1 vitamin. So, of course, the Bracer is for attack, each and the Belt's for defense. Lens is special attack. The Band is special defense. The Anklet is speed, and the Weight is HP. And uh, they're pretty easy to accrue, uh, especially if you just grind on the Battle Tower a little bit. Um, it's pretty easy to accrue Battle Points. It's just a little bit annoying. But it's also fun to test out your Pokemon. Um, eventually, the Battle Tower is just going to kick you. Not the Battle Tower. The Battle Subway is going to kick you out anyway because it's sick of you winning. Um, and that's how the battle, t battle subway works. But uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this um, EV training guide. Uh, if you have any qualms about, okay, I think I've EV trained properly, there is an in-game mechanism to check for it. Um, if you fly to Opelucid City, which is the city directly below the, um, the Elite Four um, and Victory Road and all that, and go into this building right here, the Pokemon in your first slot, if you talk to this woman and she says that your Pokemon put in great effort, that means you have maxed out the EVs on that Pokemon. You've gotten 510 EVs worth of experience. And here I switched my Pokemon. Nidoqueen has not gotten any EVs at all, so she said it could try a little harder. And if you're really, really close, like how before I said normally most trainers do 252 in one stat, 252 in another, and then 4 in another one, and then that leaves you with 2 EVs left over, she'll say that the Pokemon can work just a little bit harder, or something like that, which means you're extremely close. Uh, but if for some reason you want to just double check on that, feel free to go check her out, and she'll, she'll set you straight. So, I hope you all have enjoyed this guide. Feel free to post any questions you have below if... Uh, I my math is weird, that type of thing. If you have your own um, interesting hotspots that you like to go to, post those below as well, as I'm interested to hear what other ideas you all have. Um, but as for me, now that I have run my little uh, EV training gauntlet, now I can go in here and challenge the Elite Four. So I hope you all enjoyed this, and I will talk to you later. Bye.